Welcome to our 2022 Pioneer 26 RG. Right in your back corner here, you're going to find this little inlet. Just pop that open. It's your cable and satellite. Coax cable to plug into there. Fires up your TV location. Throughout the unit in the back here, you're going to find these little vents there. From inside, you basically just pop them open. Right. A couple of steps forward, you get your fresh water inlet. Pop that cap out of there. The water hose will stick into there. Turn on the water and that'll fill up your fresh water tank. The drain for that tank is just right in the back here. So you have that little line with the little extra blue piece there hanging off of it. That's your fresh water tank drain. Right behind it's two little water line drains. You've got a hot and a cold line drain there. Those are your low points. They just allow the water system to drain itself out. So if you're leaving the unit for a while, you don't get your water going stale or stagnant. Down underneath your fresh water inlet is a black tank flush valve. So you may notice over time after having gone and dumped your black tank, your monitor panel is still reading a third or two thirds, whatever it may be. Typically, it's just some debris inside of the tank hanging between the probes causing your misread. So what you'll do is just take your water hose and plug it into there, turn on the water, open up your black valve, and that'll just flush out that tank for you. Exhaust for your furnace here, so if you're ever running a furnace, just to make sure it's not blocked off, it does get hot. Straight up from there, we're going to find your stove vent. You just get that little flap there, you pop that open, just allows your fan inside to evacuate any sort of food that's in your stove. Once you're done, just kind of popping it back into place, and that'll prevent any sort of dust from kicking up in there while you're out traveling. Vent for your fridge here, nothing really there for you to worry about, it's just for venting. Down underneath that, we get your short cord inlet. So as you pop this open, you're going to find a little notch in the bottom corner there. It's going to line up with this notch here. Press those in together. And a little eighth turn to lock it down. You get the threaded collar in the back there to properly lock it into place. As you follow the cord back, you're going to find a standard 30 amp end there. Most campsites have that. You can just plug straight on in and you're good to go. We do also provide you with a 15 amp adapter. So if you're looking to plug into a standard household outlet, you've got the power to do so. Kind of right by there, we've got your sewer system here. So you're going to kind of press on that guy. You can pop it on out of there. You see it's got the same ears on it that your sewer hose is going to have. I'll show you that in a second here. It'll attach the same way where you're just kind of pressing it in until it's locked on. On the left is a gray valve, on the right is a black. Black valve is controlling your black tank. Black tank is choking your toilet. Of course, it's going to be your dirtiest water, so we'll dump that first. Once that's done, you can then come to your gray. Gray tank is going to be filled from your sinks as well as your shower. Typically cleaner water, we just dump that last to help keep your sewer hose as clean as possible. Towards the front, it's the city water inlet. So your water hose will just plug into there, turn on the water, and it'll pressurize the lines throughout the unit. Right underneath, it's your exterior shower. So just kind of pop that open. You get the standard head here with the three foot hose, hot and cold water. So if the dog's out getting muddy, you can spray them off where he goes inside. Once you're done, just tucking that hose back in there and lock the handle back into place. Close it back down. Hot water tank here, you just get that keyway. You can line it up and pop it on open. All your controls for turning it on are just inside the unit. Before we fry it up with either source, though, you just want to hit this relief valve right there. You should get that shot of water coming out. If you're not getting any water coming out of there there's a chance that it's empty and you do run the risk of burning out your elements so you just want to make sure it's filled up before you fire it up once you're done just locking it back down with that keyway there around to the front of the unit this black box here is a battery box as long as you're plugged into that short cord in the back or your seven pins your tow vehicle your battery will be charging for you there's two knobs here you can just loosen them off push them back and you get access to your propane tanks for the video pop it right off and then i can show you your change over in the front here so it's currently red and pointing over here. So it's letting us know we've got no propane in the system and we should be running off of this tank. So as we open that up, you'll see it go green, letting us know we've now got propane there. If it were to go red while well, you got that tank open, it's just letting you know it's no longer got any propane there. That tank's empty. You're just going to flip over the other side, run off of that tank while you get the other one filled. Power tongue jack in front. So on the left here, up is up, down is down. On the right side is a little light switch. This rubber plug there, if you pulled that out of there, that's access to your manual override for it. The manual override jack is going to be right in your storage compartment here. As you open your storage compartment up, you get that little finger latch there, holds it open for you. So inside of here, you're going to find that manual override, right? Just pops into the back. You can run it up and down if your batteries were to die. Then your water hose here. Inside your water hose, you can find your park adapter. It's your 30 amp cord to there, 15 to the standard outlet. Also, just get your sewer hose in here. So you can see it's got the same adapter there on it that your uh, sewer hose cap had. And just that little screen back there is just kind of a close off panel for that back room that we'll set up in a couple minutes here. This switch right here is just for your power stabilizers. So you just be pressing and holding extend and the power stabilizers will come down to the ground. Once they contact the ground and firm themselves up, you'll kind of hear that whine on the motor. Once you hear that, you're going to stop. If you're to continue extending, you can actually strip the gear pack right out of there. Of course, you don't need to do it. Little T-latch here would we'll just sit into the door right there. Just holds it open for you. And you get a GFR protected outlet as well as a cable and satellite outlet. So if you want TV outside, you got the power to do so. Straight up from there, you're going to find your two exterior speakers. Switch for your rear stabilizer. And then this back door here, just get your two little latches. You're going to pop those up, get those handles out of the way. Same thing on the other side. So you can grab this handle and bring this door down. 
Now, of course, with your cables attached, it's only going to let it down this far, and then you can set up your deck. If you're looking to bring it right down to use the ramp, you can just undo your little pins there. It brings it right down to the ground. For the deck rails, you're just going to undo your little pins here. And we'll fold it on up. With it up, you're going to then take your pins and just slide them in to lock them into place. Little Velcro strap here, just undo that. And then we can swing this piece around. Then it just sits right into that little piece there. Same thing on this side here. And then as you bring these two gates together, you can see you've got the little channels here that you're just going to get those lined up and our little quick bolts out of there. And then you'd just be running these little screws in from the back side, getting everything lined up of course. Right, you'd tighten it down, and there's your deck space, right? Same thing down here. All right, so now we'll make our way inside of the units. Here, so this time we'll hear just up 90 degrees, and then it falls into place, and we can open up the door. Your steps, you're just going to grab that bottom handle, pull it straight out, flip that last step over, make our way inside. So first things first, right on the left there, get your fire extinguisher. That's standard, pull the pin, point, and shoot. Straight up the wall from there, you get your light switches. On the left there, does your interior lights. On the right, does your awning light outside. Awning is on this switch here. Press and hold extend, and that awning will make its way out. Once that awning is fully extended, you're going to see a little black flap come down, as well as the black of the metal tube. Once you see that, you're going to stop. If you are to continue extending, it can actually wind itself up backwards, in which case your fabric would be underneath the tube, allowing it to then hold water, accelerating the growth of mold and mildew. Flap's just a little sticky today, so we'll just come back a little bit. And there it goes. Right. Now if it were to start raining, it's of course going to hold some water anyways. What you can do is grab either arm, front, or rear. You're just going to pull straight down on it. And you can see that changes the pitch of the awning out at the head, allowing water to then run off. Now if you like that angle better, because it does give you more shade, you can do the same thing with the arm up front. Before you bring it back in, though, you just want to make sure these guys are back out straight and fully extended, just so you're not running the risk of bending them. And bring it back in. We're just pressing and holding retract. The awning will make its way back in. Again, you're just watching to make sure that your fabric's over top of the tube. And the last thing to keep in mind with your awning is it does catch a lot of wind. Once you get up to about 15, 20 kilometers an hour of wind, you want to bring it back in. Again, just so you're not running the risk of bending your arms. Kind of on the other side of the wall from your entry door, got your power converter, press the top and center, it'll pop on open. All of your breakers are in the middle here. Whenever a breaker breaks, it sits in the center, so just turn it off and then back on to reset it. All of your fuses are on the right side. Get some storage space up above it, as well as your stereo kind of up from there as well. Get a power button up in the top right corner there. It's also going to be your mute button. To turn it off, you're going to press and hold. Zone 1 is your inside set of speakers. Zone 2 is your outside set. HDMI cable is run into it already. Get your cable and satellite outlet there, as well as your power outlet. Right by the entry door, you get another one of those little vents. Basically, you're just kind of squeezing it together in your hand, and you can move it forward and backward, I'm just kind of getting that airflow through the unit to help kind of clear out any sort of exhaust noise if you've got something running in here. More storage up top there. And then as we come into the kitchen here, you get your fridge right there. Right on the top there, you get your power button on the left. So if it at flush, is going to be on. 
And then button on the right there with it at flush is first looking for auto, which is looking for AC power. If AC power is taken away, it'll automatically flip over to gas. If you're out boondocking and you want it running solely on gas, you're going to have that button come out over flush. It'll run just on gas. If that check light there were to come on, it's just setting it what hasn't fired up at that point, just off, back on to reset it. Bridge down low. Temp selection is in the top right corner there. Right beside it's your thermostat. You're going to press that bottom bar to wake it up. It'll first come into your fan speed, low or high. That's, of course, just moving some air around. Cool high is where you're going to have the compressor coming in and out as needed with the high fan on all the time. Cool low is the same idea. Now we're using the low fan. Cool low auto is where it becomes an on-demand system where both the compressor and the fan will come in and out as needed. Just using the low fan here. Cool high auto, same idea. Now we're using the high fan. With your air conditioner going, you got two different options. You can have these louvers here closed, in which case you'd be using all of our ceiling ducting to move the air. Or you can open them up and it just dumps all of its air into the living space here. When you first get out to your campsite, you want those open. Cool off this area as quickly as possible, then you can close them off start moving the air throughout. After cool high auto, if you hit that bar again, it'll come down into heat. Turn off the air conditioner, turn on your furnace. Furnace is moving its air through your floor registers. Temp selection at any points with the arrows there. Hit that bottom bar again after heat, it'll come down and just off and turns everything off. Into your kitchen, you got your microwave up top there, pretty standard, just like home. Range vent right down below, it's getting your light as well as your fan. For the stove, you get the bifold cover that just flips on back. And you're going to take the knobs here over the light, hit it with the spark here, fires right up. There we go. Once you're done, just turn them all off, letting it cool down. And just closing that cover back off for the oven you're going to open it up grab a lighter turn that knob on the right there over to that pilot and press and hold then right in the back you can get that pilot light going once you have it going you just hold that knob for another couple of seconds then you can release and the flame will hold itself turn it up to your desired temperature and it should fire right up once you're done turn it back down just to pilot and hold just the pilot light for you but if you're going traveling you just want to make sure it's right off Turn air for your furnace down underneath it, kind of beside that you can see one of your tie downs. So if you do have something loaded up in the back here, you can tie it down safely. Some drawer space underneath your sink here, as well as a little bit of storage space there beside it. Underneath your drawers is your LP detector, propane's everything there, sits on the floor. That guy detects it and starts going off just like a smoke detector would. It is also your CO detector. Right above the sink, you get your storage bin here. You have that binder, it's got all of your owner's manuals, any keys, any remotes, anything like that you're going to find right in there. Above the sink's a little light, just on its own center switch there. Hot and cold water at the sink, of course. In the back here, you can see it's currently set up just as your dinette. If you were to take your table and just kind of wiggle it up and out of its legs, the legs will then wiggle out of their bases, and you can just kind of store it away wherever is most appropriate. For your uh, seats here, you just have your cushions that'll pull up. Take them out of the way. Then you just be folding up the base here. It's got those straps there. That you could just tie into these straps here just to hold it up for you and then these guys here just kind of pop out all right simple as that so if you needed to load up you can the seat on the other side works the exact same way and you can just see that other vent in the back there that we've gone through right by the entrance you also get little lights on either side there just on their own center switches Smoke detectors right back here. There we go. Storage above your seating area with another light here as well. And now we'll come up into the bathroom. Light switch is right up on the wall there. One on the left is your light switch. One on the right is your ceiling fan. For the roof vent, you just get that little knob there. You're just turning it to open it up. Medicine cabinet up top here. Right down below, you get your monitor panel. In the top left corner, you get battery. You can see you're currently charging. Fresh tank, as you fill that up, will go to a third, two thirds, and full. Same idea for your black and your gray tanks. Water pump switch there. Just turn that on. Turns on your water pump, drawing out of your fresh tank to pressurize your lines. Water heater on gas right in the center here. So as you turn that switch on, you get that red light there, letting you know the ignition sequence will start. Once that sequence is started, that light's going to go out. It's going to try that three times. If after the third try it hasn't fired up, this light's going to come on and stay on. At that point, just off, back on to reset it. Water heater and electricity down below it, just flip that on, fires it up with electricity. GFI protected outlet, test on the bottom, reset on top. So if you ever have outlets that don't work, it's the first thing you should check. Hot and cold water at the sink there, of course. A bit of storage down below it, just being mindful of your drains and your water lines. The shower, your travel strap, it's just that little rubber thing there. 
and just flip it on open. Hot and cold water, of course, standard head and hose. Boy, that's right behind me here. Slips on open, you get your flusher on the right side there. Bit of storage space behind it. And then in the front bedroom, light just on its own switch there. Sorry, I lied. Light switch is up on the wall there. TV backers right beside it. You get your antenna outlet up top from there. And turning that antenna on, just get that little button there. It turns on that green light, letting you know it is turned on. It will also help clear up your stereo signal. If you pick up the foot of your bed, you do get access to a little storage compartment there. Then on either side, the closet spaces are the same here. You do have that CPAP access, so there's a power outlet in here as well. The light just has a little USB outlet on it as well. Identical space on the other side. On the head of the bed, you get that little light there. And then right behind me is your emergency exit. Pulling that red tab, get rid of the screen. Take this handle here, throw it outside, hop on out. And then lastly, right behind our camera here, we've got your pre-wire for Wi-Fi. So that's about it for this unit. If you've got any other questions on it, please feel free to give us a call. 204-237-7272.